Well, good afternoon, you two. I've just blown enough money to buy a small house in Bulgaria, so that can mean one thing. I'm putting a bathroom in. trip out to Magnum Motorhomes in Grimsby this morning um, like I just said spent a fortune um, on a bathroom we've gone for uh, the Thetford C200 toilet purely because the shower tray is much deeper also the, it's the electric flush model um, I wanted the deeper shower tray the other one looks like if like one little bit of hair gone in the plug and it started to back up it'd be overflowing in seconds and i just didn't want to do that that was on the 250 is it 250 i don't know anyway 220 c200 electric flush toilet surround shower tray uh flip up sink uh bathroom cabinet and all the bits and bobs so before we get too far into it, this is where the bathroom's going. Uh, these are the walls. That's going to be the doorway. So we're going to step in to here. And then the toilet's going on the back wall there. Um, that is the 1185 we need to get everything in. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to trim some of this off the... Um, the toilet housing because it doesn't sit all the way to that side and maybe trim some off uh, the lip of the shower tray not obviously the bottom uh, and get it in before the wheel arch the other issue I've got is this is the Thetford C200 shower tray which goes with the Thetford C200 toilet base uh, they've got an overlap on them there so that sort of lips over there but well, that means if there's a part of my subframe or chassis there, I can't get my waist out. And I want my waist to go directly straight out the floor. So that's a bit of a nightmare. And the thing is with the C220s, I think it is, they've got two options for your waist. So if you can't go there, you can go there, you know. Whereas we don't have that with this. So here's to open, I don't hit anything underneath. With every day, it comes another problem. Hey ho, let's get on with it. Right, scrap everything we've done so far. We're now going for the side facing toilet. This is gonna mean that the cassette is gonna be emptied through the dog crate, but that thing folding over, you had to build a frame for the toilet to sit on then a separate frame for the shower tray to sit on. And it was an absolute nightmare. And I know that these ones are much easier to do because these ones that were fitted in the past. Uh, so yeah, we went back to Magnums twice because the first time we went back to Magnums, we didn't get there in time and it was shut. So I had to go back again this morning. So I've wasted a day and a half so far on this. Wonderful. But start again. Right, first things first, you're going to want a frame. Uh, I'm just using scrap wood for this because it's never going to get seen. There's literally pieces of pallets that I've stripped off. The gap in the frame there is where your toilet slides in. Um, this piece of frame is a lot thinner just because the front, this, this piece here, this front edge is a lot thinner. Uh, and then your next thing, again, piece of scrap ply. Uh, we just bonded this to the bottom. Uh, and that is just to stop. There's a lot of flex in these. They will flex in um, and break over time, especially in cold weather. 
they will break. Um, so you need to make sure, you just put a piece of ply in there and then we've just sicker flexed it um, down and then that's not going to take all this flex out of that or the majority of it uh, and stop that breaking over time. The next job uh, is we're going to start putting the walls in. Now to get that contour, I'll show you my special tool, my scribing tool, available in all good camper van retailers. So these are renewable, you need to keep changing these every so often, but basically um, push your full size board in against the wall and obviously because the top is narrower, you can see this one's already been done, uh, because the top is narrower it won't push all the way in. So measure the gap, how far away it is from the bottom of the wall and that is where you need to put your pen in. So today it was about 214 mil. so the pen goes in there and that will then be here. You follow that up the wall and as that follows the wall it's going to follow this shape all the way up as you run up this will run up and then that gives you a perfect line so when you cut that out that should fit straight in bad effort is it? Went a little bit skewy down there but you can see daylight but, <clears throat> but yeah one wall up one bathroom door one cassette door we've not followed the instructions for the cassette door because we just didn't need it to be that big uh, we've done it so it's just big enough to get the cassette out uh, but they do come with the Thetfords, they do come with a, a little plan if you need to follow that. Obviously, if you're using their cassette door and exiting out the side of the van, you've got to get it bang on for their door to fit, but we're not using that. I'm not saying this was a, a tight squeeze. We'll have to take the latches off the door so we can just rear it up. Good job I didn't make that any bigger. I'll tell you what. For someone that was told by his teachers he'd never amount to anything but a village idiot, that done half look good for somewhere to take a dump. So, bathroom in. Obviously, I'll put a false ceiling in. So as soon as my bathroom cladding arrives, we can get that cladded out. Not entirely sure what we're doing with the outside yet. We're still in the process of practicing with paint. We had a nice little void area here. This is either going to be some of the pipe work's going to be coming out the back here for the shower. Uh, and then if there's any space left over, that's going to be for hanging coats and what have you. But happy days. Hurry up. I want my bathroom cladding. Best order a tambador as well. It's going to hurt the bank. So I'm waiting for um, my bathroom cladding to be delivered. So what's the doing now? So I decided I'm going to put this space. This is the partition wall. It's going to block the back of the van off uh, and create crates for the poochers and the drying room. So I'm going to do that. But the problem I found now is you know that little clever trick I just showed you with the um, with the profiley thing. I can't do that on this wall because I can't get the the board in to do it. So. I'm going to have to take this wall back out and use it as a template to cut this wall, this wall. Show sure you like this look. So I'm going to take that wall back out, spin it around, use it as a template for this wall, it should be the same, and, that, and then obviously just add the extra on, and this is going to be the straight cut side anyway. Uh, and then when it comes up, it's going to come up and then jut into my recess here up and up just to finish so the back of the van is completely sealed from the front of the van and no way through well there will be a way through because the dog crates are going to be accessible from inside and outside so when we've finished a, 
a walk in some muddy horrible field we can chuck the dogs straight into the dog crates from the back so if you needed to get out there you could technically open the dog crate door and crawl out the back of the van and the van just got a little bit smaller that's not a bad template to say i just copied it off the opposite wall i've got that fairly tidy coming up there recessing in lovely this side's obviously a bit slack because well, none of these walls are fixed at the minute so obviously once that's screwed and pulled in tight that's going to give this straw wall straw it's going to give this wall a lot of sh more strength and obviously they're going to pull each other and make a nice tight fit if i can get back far enough no more back doors in the van one bathroom two dog crates and a drying room so I've now got to take this one back out and cut the, the holes uh, for the dog crates. Well, it's Sunday and the sad act's in working on the van because I really want to get this bathroom finished. Um, I'll show you what I've got done so far. So that back wall is now in. Those two holes are for the dog crates. Uh, one Akita size crate, one Frenchy size crate. Um, I stopped with the bathroom for a little while just because I needed basically these um, these bits of wood here and here. Uh, that's also the floor for the upper dog crate and then another floor section because all of that left over. So the bottom dog crate, that is going to be a whole size because obviously he's in a keter and he needs all that space. The French's dog crate is just going to go in that way. So all this is spare and all above is spare. And that becomes the drying room. So we're going to have a hanging space for coats there. And it's sort of going to be like an upside down L shape with a space for boots uh, to all be drying there. Uh, so then going into the bathroom. Um, the floor is now sealed down. Uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to run silicon all around the edges and all up the sides to seal the ply um, and then when the cladding goes on that will also be sealed uh, and then that should double up any um, water escapage capability stopping. I know you all come here for my technical terms. Right, I'm going to have to be honest. I've siliconed all this in and also not pretty silicon because it's getting it in anyway I just plugged it in but we've not drilled the hole for the waste and this section really wants to go under your shower tray in a recess in the floor and we've not got any holes so we've not put it in so we've took the toilet out and now I'm about to I've already started ripping the shower tray out, which I've got to be really careful because it's sick of flex down and I don't want to snap the shower tray because then I'm 80 quid out of pocket. Right, shower tray out, silicon off, masked up, ready to cut. Um, just going to do a pilot hole. Uh, it's very, very close to not being able to go there, but we did check that beforehand and I'm sure it's going to fit pilot hole time.
Right, so we're back to square one. Them rocks can be removed now, that should be well stuck. All the bottom of the shower tray is sealed. There's a waste in it. All the walls are sealed. There's clear silicon on those. I ran out of clear when I first did it, so I stuck white in, but again, and none of that matters because it's all getting covered and then sealed again. Let's get some boards cut. So these boards came off uh, eBay. The lady on the phone said that they are not flexible in any way, shape or form. They are very, very rigid. Um, and I won't be able to bend them around my bathroom wall. And I thought, sod it, I'm gonna have a go anyway. The guy turned up to deliver them and could barely hold them because he was nearly flapping off down the road. This is 16 boards in one packet. That might change when you link them together, but surely I'm gonna be able to bend it around that one wall that's a bit bent. Let's have a look. So they reckon these boards, all you have to do is click them together with no silicon uh, and they're watertight, but some of them are like damaged on the edges. So I really can't see that uh, being true. So I'm gonna actually put a bead of silicon in between the gaps anyway, just for my peace of mind that it's not gonna leak. Right, so that's four boards connected together. That's pretty much the width of my wall that needs to be bent. So once these are connected together, am I gonna get a bit of a bend out of it? I think they need to get a new telesales lady because based on her recommendation, I would not have bought these. If I didn't ignore her and just buy them anyway, because I thought to myself, five mil of flimsy plastic sounds like I'll be able to bend it. I wouldn't have bought these. Mm. But I'm glad I did. 83 quid to do the entire bathroom. Think when you're ordering this stuff because when I originally looked I nearly ended up buying full boards for the roof then when I realized these boards are 2.6 meters long your average van isn't tall enough for that not to be your roof so have a look if it's a little bit more to get a, a longer sheet that you can use your offputs for your roof section or other bits, then do it. Because uh, I nearly bought <coughs> boards that were only just over two meters, and that would have meant I'd have had to buy both full boards to do the roof, and it was pence more to get 2.6 meter boards, which saved me having to buy full boards for the roof. Right, one wall in and pinned. Or propped. Stuck and propped. There we go, three walls up. Just this back wall to do, which I'm obviously overjoyed about doing. Then I need to put some ply on the ceiling and do the ceiling. Bob props in, holding up a ceiling. All we need to do now is let that go off and I can seal all around the edges, put the extractor fan front on. That's all in. Uh, get that sealed up. And then we can start putting the sink and vanity unit in. So we've sealed all that up now. I've just temporarily screwed um, the sink just so 
I could make sure everything was going to fit. But that's so that's sealed now, and we've just gone with the um, whatever sealant you're going to use. Uh, I'll tell you a method that my friend told me because he saw my horrific uh, silicon skills, and this is something he taught me a while ago, and it's it just makes every person a professional siliconer. Uh, basically, what you do is run your bead of silicon straight down there, and then get a, a spray bottle with just soapy water and spray it over the entire area and then go down it with your finger or your rag or whatever you're going to use and just go down it and then it doesn't splurge out and stick because anything that splurges out won't stick because the area is sort of covered in soapy water so it can't stick to it so that means when you go down it only leaves in the exact place you want it and you just get a nice clean bead of silicon or whatever sealant that you're going to use uh, down there just neatens it up but that's in now uh it's a bit of a mess because i've chucked all the cabinet and everything in uh, but we're all in we're all sealed ready for the timber door going on right so time to get this door routed out so we can put the knocking trim so we've used 12 mil ply and then got five mil um bathroom board so technically that should be 17 millimeters thick which i'll check obviously uh so I'm gonna offset my router so it cuts in the middle, so it'll be slightly over to one side of the ply, but then when the knock-on T-trim goes on, it'll sit central. Yeah, 17 mil, so I just need to go center of 17 mil. So that'll be slightly offset on the ply, but be central to the whole width. Right, so bear with me when I show you what I'm about to show you. Now, I know what you're thinking. What on earth is that doing all the way down there? However, I really, 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 really wanted it. But, obviously, the sink needed to go there for the pipe work coming out the wall. Because I didn't want it coming out the side of the van. That'd be silly. And I couldn't put it down the internal wall because it's already up. Um, the timber door is going to run around here, which would have been the ideal spot for it on that wall. But because the timber door is running around there, that's no good. If I'd have put it up here... I'd have had not enough shoulder space so my shoulder would have been out the wall because of the amount of space it took up because the wall's narrower up there so basically when you get in here you can sit on the bog and you can open it but I can sit comfortably on the toilet it's not ridiculously low down but anyway vanity unit in, sink in, shower in this shower pole had to be cut down, we had to make that short so it fitted in there, but it's in, looks well. Um, door routed out, ready for the knocking trim, that'll be next. Then we just need to stick a timbre door on it and call that a bathroom. It's in. It's finally finished. What, on what feels like the hottest day of the millennium uh, the bathroom's done I'll give you a quick show so I'm showing you in 0.5 zoom to try and fit everything in so if anything looks out of square that's why honest um, but yeah, bathroom in and done extractor, shower I've shown you all this but I'll just show you it again uh, all the sink in the bathroom cabinet Toilet, timber door, obviously the tea trim that I said about. So, like I said, that's an 18 mil tea trim. It is a 17 mil uh, gap it's covering, uh, but they'll do 17 mil tea trim. But it's, you know, it's got a nice finish. A bit of glue on there. You absolute idiot. But it trims up nicely. Uh, but yeah, we've got a bathroom, an actual bathroom. So I'm not going to tell any porcupines, this bathroom nearly caused the van to be set on fire. Uh, just everything. Uh, it's probably one of the hardest bits of the van build. Um, it, it wasn't a nice job, not in the slightest. The shower tray caused issues, we lost 
two, probably three days trying to work things out and make things fit. Um, then we didn't think we were going to get the bathroom cabinet in. We had to put it on that wonky wall, low down to make it fit. Um, just everything. It, it was hard work. Uh, but I'm dead chuffed now because it's in and it's done and it's working and I've got a bathroom and the van's coming on. So the trouble I had getting it in was definitely worth it. I'm dead chuffed that it's in and it's finished. So if at some point during your van build you want to swear a lot, um, just swear a lot and crack on, get it done. Well, that's it. Another episode done. This one took a long time, not so much for you guys, but for me because we've been waiting for bits. We've needed other things. We've tried two different shower trays, two different toilets, two different layouts. And, uh, but, so I, I actually started filming this weeks and weeks and weeks ago uh, it seems like an eternity but it's it's done now i'm dead chuffed if you've enjoyed the video please do hit the subscribe button um like share comment we'll see you in the next one